Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the interview. I'm very fortunate to have Kim Pagano of Public Image uh, on with us today. Um, I've met Kim through some of our other clients who found her. So I definitely want to give, you know, Stacy Pacor of, you know, of uh, Olive and Betty's credit for making the introduction. And uh, since that time, I've had, I've had seen, witnessed Kim, who we call the rainmaker in action uh, in quite a number of our clients. And they've always been great, successful engagements. You know, there's all kinds of sales training you can do, but having a pro on site, dealing with the issues live, um, really can make a difference in your team and your people. Recently, I was at a, I was in Albuquerque with my kids and grandkids at a minor soccer league game on a, on a Saturday night. And we just finished a wonderful tailgate party. I get this text from Kim saying what an amazing weekend she's had at one of our clients in um, Ohio. And I was just thrilled that she shared it with me. And um, um, when she got there, when she got to the store on April 28th, they had done, um, they had 48,000 in for the month. And three days later on the 30th, they closed at 77,000. No events, no markdowns, just paying attention to, um, things that were going on in the store. And Kim, I'd just like you to talk about when you visit a location for the first time, and this was the first time here, what are some of the habits and behaviors you observe that, that you flag, um, that you then work with and train and coach people to maximize and seize those, op those missed opportunities? Um, well, well, Mark, thank you so much for having me. I'm so, I'm so excited to be here. I've had the pleasure of working with so many um, M1 clients, and it's just like, it's just my pleasure. So thank you. Um, thank you for yeah. sharing your expertise today. So oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I, when I visit I, you know, clients, I see so many good things. I want to start by saying that I, I, I rarely go to a store and everything's wrong. It, it's usually mostly right. And there's just like a few little finesses or tweaks that you have to make. Um, but I think some of the things that I see pretty consistently, whether I'm in a really high-end luxury boutique or a more moderate fast fashion boutique. You know, I see like the just general uh, things you see everywhere you go. You know, I see like, um, how can I help you being the greeting? And 99% of the time it's going to be, I'm just looking. Or, or even the, hi, how are you? I mean, I think that it's such a like, you know, uh, premeditated, you know, question that you just get this answer. People aren't even like, it's like you're a robot and so are they, you know? So like even the hi, how are you? I don't love, um, are you looking for something special? You know, let me know if you need anything. So all these like greetings that are super generic, um, that 99% of the times you're going to get a, no, I'm just looking answer. Um, so I, I see that everywhere I go. Um, some of the other things I see, you know, just like right off the bat or just even just poor scheduling, you know, so like just tweaking your schedule, um, a little bit to maximize your traffic versus like, okay, well, we're open 10 to eight. So I just need someone to open and I need someone to close and we're good. That's not that smart because you really, you know, could be losing sales. It could just be three hours. You know, people will say that like, it's really quiet though. Like we can manage it with two people, but when one person's ringing and one person, there's only one person on the sales floor, you can't get to know the clients in a personal way. You can't build the sale. Um, you can't maybe get the other things done. So something is going to suffer. Usually it's the sales because you have to do the shit better. You have to do whatever it is. Um, I, 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 just, I know, but I, I kind of want to focus on a couple of things because I said you, yeah. you've said a lot and I kind of yeah. want to retract it. We go back and focus on some of that. You know, one of the okay. examples that you gave, which might happen in more stores than what we think is um, you went to this, you went to a store and you observed that the team was sitting in the back doing busy work or, you know, receiving not busy work, but necessary yeah. work. And they were watching yeah. cameras and when customers came in, um, yes. Then they went, left the back room and they came out, which was a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you coached them and you changed their behavior. And that had a that had a spectacular impact. The one little thing like yeah. that. Could you yeah. share that? Yeah, I mean, and that was like next. It's just like tasking when you're open too, because 
you know, you walk into a store, you know, and, and the associate says like, hi, can I help you find anything? No, I'm just looking. Oh, okay. Well, just so you know, we're having this and this and this, and my name's Kim. Let me know if you need me. And then it's like, okay, I did that. I, I got that out of the way. Like, let me now go back to doing this task. And so it's like, they're, they're aware that the customer's there, you know, but they don't see them. It's really interesting. I go to stores and people will say, and this was the case when I ran my own stores, God, when you come, it's so busy. And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't have a bus in the back where I'm letting the customers out. It's just that when I'm here, we're really focused on every customer. You know, one of the days I was in that store in Ohio, it rained our second day it rained. Right. And and I'm like, inside, I'm sweating, like, oh, no, it's raining, <laughs> you know, like, it's going to be slow. And what if I can't really move the sales? And what if I don't have enough people to show them examples? Because I'm not a genie, right? I'm going to do things and customers are still not going to buy no matter what you do. And that's okay. But the more customers I have, the more opportunity I have to show them it works. And, and on that rainy day, it was slow, but around like four o'clock for some reason, you, we just got four or five people in and we, we ended up that day like $9,000, you know, and we had maybe like 15 transactions, but three of those transactions were like $5,000. So, you know, had I not been there, I don't know what would have happened, but I think it's like really being focused on the customer, you know, and, and scheduling so that, you know, okay, well, we have these orders. We have to get it done. We need someone on the sales floor. It's kind of cheesy, but I always, you know, I, when I'm training, I'll always say, oh, think of the sales floor, like, I don't know, a basketball court or a football field, right? And there's always you know, I mean, I'm not a sports person. I don't know why I use that, but I don't know if there's 15 people on the team basketball. I don't know. Let's say there's eight playing the game. And then there's like six on the bench waiting to play the game. And then the coach, where's the coach? The coach is always on the floor, like implementing the plays, coaching throughout the day, motivating that, them when they're winning, you know, adjusting when they're losing, pulling people off the bench, swapping people. So like for me, when you're like doing busy work behind the cash counter, or in the office, you're on the bench, and we need those people on the bench. We always need people playing the game. And that's not to say play games with customers. That's not what I'm saying. But really being focused all day, all day, from whatever time you're open until whatever time you're closed to the customer. So if you if I was on the floor and I was selling and you heard me go up to somebody and say, hi, you know, my name's Mark. It's good to see you today. You know, if there's anything I can do for you. Um, just flag me, I'm here for you. How would you change that? What would you say to me to, you know, to get a better engagement with the customer that came in? Assuming yeah. I didn't know them. Yeah, I think that the first thing is, you know, I would give you good feedback, like Mark, that was great that you greeted that customer. Um, but we're more of a specialty boutique. And we want when clients come in, because every store they go in, they're getting this like, you know, a kind of greeting. We we want it to be a little bit more unique and we want it to be a little bit more special because we actually want to engage with them throughout their whole transaction and not just like when they need something, because most people don't need anything. I really believe that, too. You know, when a woman, you know, when I work in a boutique and a woman, um, you know, comes in and she's like, I need a dress. I really believe she doesn't need a dress. I believe she has five dresses in her closet already that she can wear. So I believe what she needs or really wants is to feel good. And it's our goal to figure out what that is and to get her to buy that thing to make her feel good from our store and not like Sephora up the street or maybe an ice cream cone. I don't know. So I think like the way to do that and have people be more open to engaging with you is to just be a normal person and, you know, not use this like skid or anything and, and just greet in an open way. And if it's the morning time and just say, good morning, and they say, good morning, and then you let them settle a little bit and then find out if they've ever shot with you before. I love that. So that's kind of my second step when I'm, when I'm training, I'll say, just say, good morning. That's it. They'll respond back, good morning. They're not going to say, no, I'm not going to talk to you. They're going to say, good morning. You let them settle a little bit and then just say, like, have you shot with us before? And they might say, yes, I have. And then you should say, oh, good. Welcome back. My name's Kim. What's yours? 
and you're going to say your name. And now that's the first step to building um, a more personal shopping environment. Now I know your name, you know mine. You're not going to be weird and awkward and say like, good morning, hi, my name's Kim, what's your name? Like, no, you're going to be like very more chill, you know? Now I have your name. Now I'm going to give you time to look a little bit. But while you're looking and I'm giving you that space because everybody's always so worried that we're going to push the person. You're not trying to push anybody, but we're the experts, right? So people will engage with you if they feel like you have something to offer that they don't maybe know. So that's why if, if you ask kind of you find something, they don't even know what they want. You know, they, they just want to feel good. So really, you know, it's up to you to determine that, right? So while they're looking, I like to start to think, What's their style or, you know, um, what's something in the store I think might be great. Maybe if it wasn't an apparel store, you know, I go into gift shops sometimes. There's one here in Philly and they have everything Philly. And um, whenever I go in, they're always standing behind the counter that they never help the customers until the end. And I always think, oh, if I worked here, you know, I would right away be like, hey, how's your day? You know, good. How's your day? Um, are you visiting? Oh, no, I'm local to Philly. Oh, cool. You have to see this really cool Philly pretzel pillow we just got in. It's so cool. Or if they're not, then I would say, oh, well, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, so fun. So I would like engage, right? But I think it's important, like, when the client's looking that we start to prepare, how, because we want to socialize, but we want to sell. Because that's the other thing I see a lot in stores, like, you know, people will start to talk about, you know, whatever it is in these suburbs, it could be that, um, oh, your kid goes to this school. Oh, my son goes to that school. Oh, that soccer team. And you start to like talk and talk and talk and you're all really socializing. You take up all their time and they're like, oh God, I got to go. So then they never get to buy anything. Or then on the flip side, we're just selling. So we're selling, selling, selling. Oh my God, that floral top or that dress, or this is so good. Or you have to get it. And then the customer leaves and I don't know, they don't buy anything or they, they bought something. And all we know is that they're a size small. So like, you know, I know we'll chat about it later, but it's like that early stage of like getting the client's name, kind of assessing style and, you know, if it's an apparel store and, you know, hopefully they pick something. If they don't pick something, be prepared to be the leader um, to show like, I understand your style. I know something that you might like. And, and from that point, you kind of gather the facts. And sometimes they are looking for something special. You know, they may have a, uh, a dress that they need. But for me, I don't I don't wait for that. I don't I don't need to know what you potentially need or want, you know, because I'm the expert. So like when you go to a restaurant, you always ask the waiter, like, what's your favorite? You may still go right. with what, right? You still go with what you may like, but you feel like they're the expert. And that's. That's what I think. I, yeah. I want to ask you a question. It's hard to break yeah. in because I want to make I'm sure sorry. We, that that's great. No, I love your enthusiasm. And, um, you know, it, it's obvious that you, what you talk about is what you actually do in the store, which is what I love about you. Uh, the But, you know, I love the fact that you say, um, you know, my name's Kim, what's yours? Or, you know, you extend yourself. How often do people just shun you or walk away or ignore you? Because I think people are afraid of rejection. Yeah. I mean, I think that you have to have high emotional intelligence. That's what I think. You know, so when I say, good morning, and they say, good morning. I really think it's not because they're not nice. I just think it's that every store that you go in, it's just that automatic. And I help. it's just like, oh, it's the same old thing. It's really up to you to make it different. So, you know, right, I think when that- you're, when you're, And I love the thing about high emotional intelligence, reflect who the customer is and then their mood and don't get them out of, you know, their their sense of who they are or their space. <laughs> but I love the fact that you extend, you're willing to extend yourself and say your name and ask their name. And I think for some people that takes a certain amount of courage. And, you know, how often, you know, even if somebody doesn't tell you, most of the time they will, don't they? I mean, what's the... They never, they never, ever, ever don't tell you. It's, I mean, it does not happen. It does not happen. I mean, I'm in stores all the time. I was in a store on Sunday. It just doesn't happen. I mean, you know, it could be, you know, that you greet them and that they're, you know, the normal, like a little standoffish. Um, they're a little standoffish at first, um, but... 
they never don't give your name. There's it's it's rare that someone's like so no, it it just doesn't happen. Sorry guys, I'm having a problem with my shutter. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. So while you're fixing your shutter, like Thank so you. you're obviously in a place that doesn't need air conditioning. I have no. two sides. So it's, <laughs> we're, we're waiting to hit 94 here. So I, you know, I think you get a lot of that. We've talked about it before that you know the, the salespersons are afraid to extend themselves because yeah. they don't want to seem and come across as pushy. And, you know, you've you've had people change over the course of a few days where they came in feeling that way. And they went after you left. I mean, they've, they've had a complete change of they've had a life changing experience in recognizing that it isn't really all about being pushy. And if you yeah. could share some of your thoughts on that, that'd be great. Yeah, I think it's it's not, you know, I you know, one of the you know, there's always one in every store I go to, that's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to push people. And it's really, you you know, what I like to say is guys, you're going to think I'm pushy. I don't think I'm pushy, but you're going to think I'm pushy because anything is pushy compared to, hi, how are you? Can I help you find something? Let me know if you need me. I'll be over here at the cash counter doing a task. I mean, anything is pushy compared to that. So I don't push people. I I think it's important to stay focused. You are at work. We are here to create great experiences for the clients and to have fun while we're doing it. We have a goal to achieve. So, you know, everywhere you go, you have a goal to achieve, right? Like in every single job. So know what the goal is, be the expert, and just try to create great experiences for clients. You know, I... I had a a client in that same store um, that was with her friends shopping. And so it was the three girls on that rainy day shopping. And the woman came out with a jacket that was very small, too small for her. And it was a last piece with a skirt. And I know that owner would have been happy if I sold it. And when she came out of the room, her friends were like, oh, my God, it looks amazing. And I was thinking, oh my God, it's so small. It's so small. And I even walked by the owner thinking like, oh, we can't let her buy it, you know? And our friends are there saying, it's amazing. It was a slam dunk. It was sold. Um, Her name is Andrea. And I went in the room and I'm like, I don't want to offend her either. And I said, Andrea, like, I, I think that jacket's small. And she was like, it is, right? And I said, yeah. When she said, like, what do you think about the skirt? And I was like, I love the skirt. You can wear that with a turtleneck in the fall. Like, we can find something better. And then I went on the floor and I found this beautiful Ula Johnson outfit, which was $1,200 compared to the $200 sale jacket. And she looked incredible in that. And we used that a lot over the three days. And I think that that alleviated the pressure for the team that we're not trying to push anybody into anything. But we ha- sometimes we project like, oh, well, I don't like when I go into a store and they do this, you know, so then that means nobody likes it. So I don't I don't think that's true. I, I think, again, most people that come into the store, they just want to have a great time. They want to they want to feel good. Yes, occasionally they need something, but most time they just want to feel good. So it's our jobs as experts working in whatever store it is, selling whatever product it is to show them all of the great things that we think they would love and the things that they don't love, we should put away. I, I, I say that, like, just try it. You don't like, I'll put it away. Don't worry about it. Show me anything you love. That example had two great points. to it. One is you were completely honest. So that builds confidence because you're not looking just for the customer today, but you're looking for her to shop and have confidence in you in the future. But secondly, you know, you don't think about, what the customer can afford and not afford to spend. You're not prejudging them on price. And I think that happens a lot because we just assume the customer is a bargain chopper, but that's not necessarily true. Oh, I I don't know how long we have on this call, but I could give you endless, I can give you endless examples. I worked with a client on Sunday in a store. The client's name was Trisha. She was shopping with her son and her and her son's uh um girlfriend. And we had a sale rack outside, you know, everything, you know, 25% off plus 25% off some crazy sale. And she pulled a bunch of stuff from sale. And when she gave me that stuff to put in the room while she looked around, I added a bunch of full price. And that that was something we focused on um, that day because it was Memorial Day weekend. Of course, you know, lots of people want to come out and get some sales. Um, 
but I don't, I just don't look at the clients like that. I just, for me, I show all of the great products I think would be great for them. And I don't stop showing it until they tell me that they're done, you know, and that sale was um, a thousand dollars and we sold a lot of sale that day, but because we had, we kept building the rooms and, you know, if they were trying full price, we did add sale, make sure the items don't compete. You know, that's something I really try to do. So we're, we're showing sale because we want to get, you know, we want to get rid of it um, with the full price, but yeah, we're adding um the full price. So I could give you so many stories where even I project, you know, like I have this story from a client in, um, uh, in Calexico and imagine I was doing training in the store that where, you know, like 99% of the customers speak Spanish. And so does the team. So it was quite challenging. Um, and you know, uh, man, what's that? How's your Spanish? Oh, not good. I, I literally would like need to know the time change. So in the morning it would be like, I think, uh, when is this, you know? And then, so I was like, okay, let me know. Like, when do we switch to Buenos Aires? You know, I wouldn't know. Um, but, you know, in this example, we were doing a buy more, save more. And, you know, when a, a guy came in um, with his wife, you know, like a couple. And um, I'm thinking, I don't even know why they need a coat. It's like 70 degrees, but they want a coat. It's cold for them. And he's trying on two coats, right? And um, maybe they were $200 coats or something. And we were, I think it was like, if you spend 300, you get this certain, you know, whatever. I wanted them to spend 300. So I don't know what's happening with the sale. And I keep coaching the associate, bring them to the woman's side too. We want, you know, sell them something on the women's side, you know, and they're talking because I'm assuming he's going to buy one coat, right? Um, and I want that sale to be $300. So like, we need to get the woman on the woman's side. So two, three times I'm saying to, uh, the associate Alberto, Alberto, bring her to the other side. We need the sale. And he said, no, Kim, he's buying both coats. And I was like, oh my God. Right. Like I would never have thought he was going to buy two coats. Right. I'm just assuming, oh, it's hot California. They need they don't even need a coat. He just wants a coat. He's going to buy one coat. So we all do that. We all project. And you just have to be careful to just show everything great. The customer will let you know when they're done. So you talk a lot. I read your recaps when you go to a store. By the way, when um, when she's engaged with a client, um, she's there. And it's just not temporary. The, what she does has lasting impact. And um, that's that's a wonderful thing, too. Uh, but she also, you know, Kim writes up a wonderful recap. And one of the one of the words that really struck with me is socializing. You know, you talk all about socializing with the customer and how that helps build a rapport. And almost like sometimes you become like their concierge. But I, if you could talk a little bit about what socializing means, because earlier you talked about there's too much socializing. The client says, oh, my gosh, I got to leave and nothing's happened except, a, you know, a friendly chat when the real goal is to is to get the customer engaged. So if you just talk about what socializing means, how you use it, how you build relationships, turn them from customers to clients. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that it definitely starts and, you know, initially, right? And and listen, sometimes it's crazy, busy, insane. You, you know, may, maybe you're not going to be perfect with every client every day. I get it. You know, you just do your best. But I would say that for me, the first step is when you get their name. And that for me makes it like shopping with a friend. You know, it's so awkward that you spend all this time on the sales floor with the with the customer at that point. And then you go to the fitting room. You're like, oh, my name's Kim. Let me know if you need anything. You don't even get their name. You, you know, you spent 10, 15 minutes with them on the floor, right? Showing them all this product, you know, and now it's like at the fitting room, you know, so of course they're not going to really come out of the fitting room or engage with you much when you're in the fitting room. It's kind of like, it's kind of cold, you know, or worse, I even see sometimes they don't even get the name until they get to the cash counter and go to put them in. Oh, what's your name? Oh, your name is Mark. Okay. So like for me, it starts with, you know, that open greeting, right? Showing them right away, like um, up here, I'm open, I'm fun. Um, not overly, you know, I, 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 I'm my authentic self. I'm not trying to put on an act, but I am at work. So I'm using like my work voice and, um, you know, I greet them get their name, they know my name, give them a little time to settle. And then I might 
make a little chat, you know, like, oh, what are you up to this weekend? Or, you know, what are you doing this weekend? And then, you know, um, they might say, oh, I'm going to the park later with my baby. And then I'll say, oh, how old's your baby? Oh, I have a three-year-old, right? So I'm like storing all this information. Oh, boy or girl. Oh, a little girl. Her, or her name is Isabel. And then I'll say, I'll try to find something in common. If I have something, maybe they, maybe I don't, right? So I don't have kids. So I might say, oh, my brother, he's like a young grandpa. Now he has a, like a little three-year-old. It's been so fun because all my nieces and nephews are old, right? So then I socialized a little bit, right? I know she has a daughter who's three years old. She's going to go to the park later. And now, I wanna, you know, I want to get back to selling, right? So then I hope, I'm hoping she's going to pick something, right? But she hasn't picked anything. She's halfway through the store. And I'm going to say, uh, let's say her name's Jackie. Jackie, I know you're just looking around, but we just got this amazing jean in. It fits so incredible. It's been super popular. It would look really great on you. And at that point, she might say, oh, that's not what I'm looking for, right? Because I've never asked, do you need something? Are you looking for, I don't need to know that right now. It's okay. You know, she might though, at that point say, oh no, that's not what I'm looking for. And then it's okay for me to say, well, what are you looking for? And then she might say, oh, I actually have, you know, a wedding and I need a great dress. And I ask the normal questions. When is it? Who's, you know, oh, who's getting married? Oh, your sister. Amazing. Okay. It's in two weeks in the Bahamas. Okay. I have a great, you know, idea. And then this is where it's a little different for me compared to, I think, what normal um, salespeople would do. So for me, I start to show her the dresses, right? But as soon as she likes one dress, I break away. So the average salesperson is saying, well, Jackie, what about this blue dress? No. Okay. What about this purple dress? No. What about this pink? Yes. Oh, you're a small, perfect. And then they kind of hold it and then they keep going and they walk the whole store. Oh, we have this dress and we have this dress and we have this blouse with this skirt and, and they collect and they collect, right? And then they go to the room with all of the things that are going to be perfect for this one event. I don't do that. I really believe, like I said, most people don't need anything. They just want it. And on the rare occasion where, you know, they do need something, uh, I still think that they would take more than just that one thing. So for me, as soon as they came into one thing, whether I've picked it or they've picked it, I go and build the fitting room, which we'll talk about, right? So I break away, I go back, I build the room, I give them time to look, I come back, I start to show them more, and then I might ask some other questions, you know, um, maybe not about the wedding. So I might say like, Jack, do you live around here? Oh, you live? Oh, I live in I live in the city. I don't I don't even know the suburbs that well. And do you work from home? Or I'm not going to ask like super personal, intrusive questions. I'm going to be like, you know, as the conversation's going, it, it just kind of flows like it would with a friend. And I'm selling and I'm like, oh, Jackie, this is so great. You would love this dress too. This is really good. And yeah, like, do you do Pilates over there? Because I, you have great arms. Oh yeah, I always want to do Pilates. So again, I'm just like having these organic conversations. Then they go to the room. We have all these other dresses, but I've already built the room. I've already added a great pair of jeans, cute blouse. Um, you know, uh, a blazer. And then I add the other dresses that they've picked and I've picked and I've had this conversation with them. So I say, Jackie, show me anything that you love, right? I, that's the other thing I don't like. Uh, I don't like like they close the curtain. They say, let me know if you need anything. Um, I'll be close by if you need me. Don't, that, I think it's like so just generic and it blocks the sale. For me, I want to keep the sale going. I want to know what's happening in there. And while she's in there, it also, I get to know her a little bit more. It sounds long, you know, and sometimes it is. The woman, Trish, who is going to Maryland for a wedding, uh, who works in IT, her son was there, like I said. Uh, I forget his name, but his girlfriend's name was Gia. Uh, I think she's leaving for the, the wedding on the 17th. Um, so, so like you collect all this information as you're going and you don't remember it all, of course, and you can't do it with everyone. We don't need every customer to be a client, but we need more clients, you know? 
So when a, a customer hits the fitting room and you've got this whole fitting room built, do you ever have them go, oh my gosh, what, do I, what did I get myself into here? Times, I mean, you know, people will say like, um, well, don't they, they didn't ask for it. You know, like um, I'm trying to think what there was one thing that happened in, in Ohio um, where someone was looking for something. Let's just say it was like, a, again, like a, a dress and, and I added in jeans. Um, oh, I have a better story. I have a better story. I worked in Connecticut like six months ago with a woman named Christine. Okay. And she was tiny. And she came in and said that she was celebrating her 60th birthday. And she knew that she was going to have a surprise party. Her daughter told us, right? And that her, do her daughter told her. And that her daughter said, you need to wear solids. You know, like navy, red, but like a solid color. And this whole store was floral. So right away, the bells are going off on my head. Like, 911. <laughs> and I also wasn't sure we were going to have her size, to be honest. And so I was working with a stylist and the stylist starts to work with Christine and I start to pull like jeans and, you know, casual dresses, like not for the party. And the stylist comes up and says, no, what, what's this room? Like it's for her 60th birthday. And I said, I know, but we may not have that. Don't worry about it. Keep it going. And, you know, in the end, you know, Christine, I tried on a lot of great things that I rejected, that I rejected. And I said, no, Christine. That's not for your party. That's not for your big party. And in the end, she spent six hundred dollars, which was a lot. It's a more moderate price point store. And in the end, I told her we don't, we don't have the dress. We don't have this special dress. And she got other things. And then I actually, at the end, and I don't work there. At the end, she said to me, um, "Yeah, you know, she knew I didn't work in the store." And I just said, "Oh, I was a friend visiting." And she said, "Oh, Kim, let me know next time you're visiting." And I'll come back or something like that. And then a few days later, I text her and said, Christine, did you find your dress? And she was like, yes, I found my perfect dress. And I said, oh, I'm so happy. Send me a picture at the party. And she did. And if I worked in that store, she would be my client because we, you know, we had fun. We built trust. She bought lots of great things. And I think she was really happy. I think, I think you can't get stuck. I don't, I don't want to confuse people, but I don't really, I listen to the customer course, but I don't get stuck on just on what they say. You know, um, sometimes the customer will say, I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. Right. If they were in that big a rush, they wouldn't have stopped in, you know? So, so even then I build the room, I build the room. And if they, they don't say they're in a rush, they're actually putting a wall up to say, I don't want to be waited on. I'm in and out and I'm killing time. Um, yeah. But you break down those defenses, right? And I think that's, you know, I think sometimes we look to see we're more interested in checking the boxes than really creating wants for people. And um, I think that's a lot of what I'm getting out of what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I just think that for me, I always have an open mind. And I, even if someone says, oh, I just need a top, you know, for, zoom calls for some jeans i just bought like you would never think to put jeans i would still put jeans i would say like well i mean i don't know about you but like i love buying jeans so just because i just bought one pair doesn't mean i won't buy another pair it's just whether or not they're going to buy it in your store if you don't show it so when someone says i need some great tops for zoom call i start showing the tops and when they're like oh that's a good one i stop and i say oh yeah look around jackie i'll find you some more and then i go add a great pair of jeans a great blazer and i don't know uh, a sweater and then i go back to all the tops then i'm not i'm not going to ask them oh jackie do you want a pair of jeans they're going to say like no, I just told you I just bought a pair of jeans. Or no, 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 I don't need any more jeans. But for for me, I feel like the more they try, the more they buy. Like, like Mark, are you sweet or salty? When when you're gonna have a snack, is it chips or cookies? Probably both. I make a chip <laughs> sandwich. Uh, you have to pick. I have to choose. I probably yeah. choose a cookie first. Okay, so you're sweet like me. Right. So so for me, um, 
you know, I, you know, I was at a barbecue this weekend, right? Memorial Day. And I brought cupcakes and I really was thinking I should bring something I don't like because I know I'm a sugar addict. And if I eat one cookie, if I just try one cupcake, I'm going to want more. So I really try not to buy them. When I buy sweets, I plan to eat. I buy the, I buy a pint of ice cream. I plan to eat the whole pint. Okay. So I, I think you have to think of it like that. Like if you show the right things, people try it and they're going to buy it. Not all the time. I build lots of rooms and people don't buy everything. I build lots of rooms where people mostly buy what I pick and some of what they pick. And, and I'm happy. I'm happy with whatever they buy. I just need to know that I did my part to show everything good. So that's why sometimes the clients will say, no, 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 no. I don't want to try it. I don't want to try it. Because they know if they try it, they'll buy it. So I'm going to ask this question. So you had um, in, in Ohio, one of the women admitted that she felt like it was a pushy, your, your whole process was pushy and she wasn't that yeah. way. And then after yeah. three days working with you, she yeah. like had a metamorphosis. Can you, yeah. can you recall what she said? Because I remember when you told me, I was yes. thinking, oh my gosh, that's just perfect. Yeah. And you yeah. unsolicited from you, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of our meeting, I, I I try to do the training and ask them, like, what do you want to get out of the meeting? So that I make sure I cover because everybody has different, you know, different things. And um, this one woman said, uh, and so I said, well, what do you want to get out of the training? And she said, well, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to get out of that because I know how to dress myself. I feel like I don't need help when I go into a store. Um, so I, you know, I don't want to be pushy. <laughs> I have the little, it did throw me, Mark. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I said, okay, well, you know, again, that's when I said to her, everything's going to feel pushy compared to maybe what we're doing today, you know? So then I think like as the day progressed, the days progressed and I work with them and they realized like, wow, this is really fun. And people were leaving, um, you know, we had, we had clients leaving saying, wow, this is like, the best experience I had here, you know? So I think that, um, you know, and, and the owner Tracy went to a, an event that Sunday and one of the clients, the girl, the girl, Andrea, who I rejected the jacket, she had said to her, wow, like I had such an amazing time in your store. Um, and we did so many special things. Like I can go on and on, you know, we had like a mother daughter shopping. It was the daughter's birthday and uh, they were having a day together. They were going to the spa later. Like we have a great cupcake place um, in the shopping center. We went water a cupcake while they were trying things on. So like you make it like a great experience. And we you know made what? It into a party. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and, so and this yeah. is great stuff because I think what, happens is a lot of people let outside influences impact their thinking about how much business they're capable of doing. And then when you really break it down to each single customer who comes in that you create an opportunity with, you really have a chance to do more business than you did before. And that's what you prove every time you go in. It's not about you didn't run an event, you didn't have markdowns that, you know, we're going to, you know, sell markdowns. It's really all about creating the environment to do more business and getting training people up to be able to do that. So one of the things that happens after you leave is that the business continues to grow. I mean, their metrics may not be as good as when you got there, but they continue to build and grow after you leave. So um, talk a little bit about how you're able to create some of that sustainability. Yeah, I mean, you know, sadly, it, it you know, it, it doesn't happen everywhere because you know, they, they have to keep it going. That's, that's the difference. Yeah, the, you have the, the owner's got to be bought yes. into the process. Right? Yeah. 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 And but I, I think like, are. yeah, because, you know, I won't be there. And, and I always say that, look, I'm an extra person on the floor. Right. And I am a more senior salesperson. So, and they're, everybody's going to be at their best, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm there, everybody's focused and they're not doing other things. So I think like if, if they can keep it, going and they I try to break it down into those steps of like greeting in an open way getting their name sampling the product building the fitting room you know um don't close too soon you know like uh, we didn't talk about that I don't know if we'll talk about that but like they love that they love to go behind the counter and start getting it ready like the clients will be in the fitting room and they'll say like oh yeah I'll take these three things 
And then they go behind the counter and they start to get the tissue paper ready. And then when the client comes in, they're like nice behind the counter waiting to close the sale. The owner um, did that. And, and it was shocking that it was so good because we had a client at the cash counter and we were, we were actually Tracy, the owner was ringing her and she like switched straight, you know, for a second. And I said, and, and she looked back at the owner and said like, Oh, I'll be right there. Like she's telling the customer, like, I mean, the customer's telling the, the owner basically, Oh, I know you're waiting for me. I know we have to ring me up, but like, give me one more second, you know? So it's these little things that you do that send a signal to the client, like, okay, it's time to go. Like, I want to move on to something else, you know? Yeah, that so psychology like, of hurry to close just doesn't make any sense. Yes, yeah. So it's these little steps that that I train right on. And then if they keep practicing it over time, I think, and they, like in the case of these two stores, I just got the sales, um, the owner sent, like, you know, the one store did $105,000. Like their budget was- and What did they do last year? Oh, I mean, you want, I can pull it up. I mean, it was like a 70, I think like a 70, well, the one location it was a 70% increase on last year. And that store was new. I think that that's also, you know, it's kind of scary because it's like you have this new store, you know, they, they have one store that's 10 years old and they have a lot of history and they have this new store that we're building the history. And um, I can give you so many examples, but like, you know, the store, I think last month, the new store did like close to 90, I want to say. And like, I don't know, the prior month, uh, like, like 60 or something. And the owner had even taken out expensive product from that one store because they said like, oh, we can't sell it here. So the new store, they took the expensive Ola Johnson product and sent it to the other store, right? Well, I worked in the other store and I think the first store has the more, the client. Like for me, my goal for the first store, oh, I'm not revealing too much. She's going to kill me, this owner. Um, that my, my average sale goal for them is 400 now. And they were at, when I got there, they were like 275. That's my goal for them, 400, right? And then the other store, you know, I moved that average sale. I wasn't there on a weekend, which was a little different, but like for me, their average sale goes 350. So, so anyway, so they're building this history, right? Like, oh, we can't sell this product. And, you know, maybe, maybe we can do a million. Well, honestly, that store I can confidently say, confidently say, um, is in three years could be like a $2.5 million door if they keep doing what I taught them. And she keeps doing her part. She's a great buyer. But it has nothing to do with the economy. It has nothing to do with uncertainty. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just taking care of the people as they come in the store and, you know, and being focused and rigorous about it. So um, the, what about the after sale? The customer's all packed up. You know, hopefully we haven't hurried them to, to close, but and we've got them built up. But, you know, the sale doesn't end just when they leave the store, right? Yeah. Well, the yeah, relationship I think doesn't end. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's where, again, you know, are we going to get to know every single customer and transition them into a client? No, but we don't need them, right? There are going to be people that, you know, shop with us once and don't live close by. Um, and I don't I don't know. They're just a customer, you know, and, and that's fine. But there are a lot, there are a lot of, I think customers that have client potential and because we don't get to know them um, and we don't follow up with them, they just stay customers. Like every store I go to, I'll say like, all right, let's pull a list of, you know, any customer last year that spent $1,500. If that's, if it makes sense for the price point of the store, um, spent $1,500 in their first shop. And they've not shopped again or not shopped in six months. Everybody does that, right? And, you know, we pulled this report in that one location I was in and we had like a list of 30 people. Um, and so so these are all people that could be clients. They didn't come in and just buy like a t-shirt, right? They, they spent $1,500 and maybe maybe it's not $1,500, whatever it is, you know, that, you know, nobody knew that, you know? And I think what happens is, you know, today Jackie comes in and she works with me and, I don't really get to know her. She has a good experience. She spends a thousand dollars, right? We don't do anything with her, right? 
Three months later, she comes back and now you help her mark. And she's same thing, good experience. You don't know her. She spends $2,000, right? Does it come back two months later? So it's like these customers that are, you know, spending significant amount, significant amounts. Nobody knows them. And and when they're not shopping with you, they're shopping. They're shopping somewhere, you right. know? So that's the key. The key is like, you know, it starts with the name exchange, um, you know, and then, you know, selling and socializing throughout, getting to know something about the client um, so that you can follow up and then staying connected. You know, and I have to say, like, that's one thing I learned from Olive and Betty's. I learned so much from my clients, too. You know, I think that we have to have, like, even the most experienced people, you have to have this, like, I just am open to learning. And I take something from every client, you know, like I love at that one client I was with in Ohio, they have like a library and they do like book club. Well, I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to share it with my other clients. So, um, you know, I think that's it. You just have to be genuine, be authentic. Don't sell the whole time. Get to know two or three things about the client. And then immediately within like 24 hours, I would say I would follow up, you know, um, when I was in that one store, I was chatting with a woman and her mother-in-law and she was a vet. And um, we were having this like conversation and she told me she was a vet. And I was like, oh my God, I have this question about my dog. So it's a true story. Um, and she gave me really good advice. And I think they had an amazing experience. And yesterday I texted the store and said, hey guys, can you let Shelly know that I did neuter the dog and I'm so happy I did. And I did it because of her advice. And they sent me her cell and I sent her a message and, you know, and I, and I thanked her, you know, and I, and I think that, you know, for, for her, I would hope because for me, it was such a genuine um, conversation. And I, I did, of course, sell her things. That is my job. Selling is not a bad thing. Everywhere you're going, they're selling. And that's something I trained too. You know, it's October and, you know, you go to Whole Foods and what's outside, Mark? It's October. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Like, right. So they're selling to you. They're saying it's time to prepare for, you know, Halloween. Buy the mums, buy the pumpkins. You go in and there's like pumpkin pancake mix, right? So- Everywhere you go, someone is selling you something and it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, so so when they come into your store, it can't just to be about just selling to sell. It has to be about like believing in the product, being excited about it and being being focused and then being the leader and people, the customers will follow people. Everything that everybody sells everywhere you can buy somewhere else. What you can't buy is that experience with the stylist or the salesperson or the, you know? Yeah, we, when you were talking about um, the Trader Joe's experience, or there's somebody's, they're always out there presenting something to get you to buy something. Uh, there's a great book that I would recommend everybody read. It's called To Sell Is Human by Daniel Pink. And he goes into, I really studied it for a long time. He's a wonderful author, um, but it really, really talks about exactly what you're saying. It's our human nature to want, you know, I've got a doctor, you've got to see her, you've got this ailment, this is a person. We're always sharing our experiences because we, we we're proud that we can help create and solve other people's issues or problems in, in selling in, 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 um, in shoe. And God, by the way, a lot of these examples have been in a fashion, women's fashion, but you've also been in other types of retailers too. I know you've done a great job, some of our footwear stores and, and other things. So these, these translate into whether it's luxury men's or luxury women's or shoes, or you're selling logo apparel. It's all, it's all about the human connection. Kim, how do people get hold of you if they want? I mean, you can certainly reach out to Management One and we'll connect you to, to Kim, but certainly you, know, you should share the best way to contact you. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I I'm so I, I'm so not techie and organized. I never I never did uh created the website. It's on my long list of things to do. Um, but they can totally reach me at my email, which is Kim at publicimage.com. So it's P U B L I K I M A G E dot com. Um, or like my Instagram, which is underscore public image underscore. 
Super. And then anybody that wants to get hold of you can certainly reach out to Management One and we'll connect you. I mean, it's just always a joy to be with you and spend time with you, Kim. Thanks for sharing your expertise and your time. Um, I was telling Paul Erickson this morning about the interview we were going to be having today. And he says, oh, the Rainmaker. So uh, you've got a great reputation in our community. Uh -huh. And um, I just thank you for sharing your knowledge. I don't, I think that sometimes we look for things that are really complicated to do. And it's a lot of it's just the willingness to extend yourself, be genuine, be honest, be truthful, and give people an opportunity to feel really good about themselves. And that's one of the reasons why consumerism it runs, it drives the entire uh, economy. I mean, it, the biggest part of the component of the American economy is consumerism. So we're just, you know, helping support and feed that as well. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me. It's always fun to spend tonight with you. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks for sharing. Pleasure.